The gentle hum of the stargazer's engines filled the cramped cockpit, a sound so familiar to James Sterling that he barely noticed it anymore. He leaned back in the worn pilot's chair, his calloused hands resting lightly on the controls. The vast emptiness of space stretched out before him, an endless sea of stars twinkling against the inky blackness. James glanced over at his son, Josh, who sat in the co-pilot's seat, idly flicking through data on a battered tablet. At 22, Josh was the spitting image of James at that age, same unruly brown hair, same determined set to his jaw. The only difference was in the eyes, where James were a weathered blue, hardened by years of service and the unforgiving nature of space, Josh's were a bright, eager green, still full of wonder at the universe around them. Another riveting day in the exciting life of interstellar freight haulers, A.A. James chuckled, breaking the comfortable silence that had settled between them. Josh looked up from his tablet, a wry smile tugging at the corners of his mouth. Oh yeah, Dad, this is exactly what I dreamed of when I said I wanted to follow in your footsteps. Endless hours of staring at the void, punctuated by the occasional excitement of docking procedures. James laughed, a deep, rumbling sound that filled the cockpit. Come on now, it's not all bad. Remember that time on Proxima B when we had to outrun those customs officials? You mean when you forgot to declare those Regellian spices and nearly got us arrested, Josh raised an eyebrow, his grin widening. Hey, I maintain that was a simple misunderstanding, James protested, holding up his hands in mock surrender. Besides, it all worked out in the end, didn't it? Josh shook his head, still smiling. Sure, Dad. Whatever you say. Their banter was suddenly interrupted by a burst of static from the comm system. Both Sterling snapped to attention, all trace of levity vanishing in an instant. Mayday, Mayday. This is the passenger transport celestial dream. We are under attack by pirates. Thousands of lives at risk. Please, anyone the message cut off abruptly, leaving a heavy silence in its wake. James's jaw tightened as he quickly pulled up the signal's origin on the nav computer. His eyes met Josh's, seeing the same mix of concern and determination reflected there. Dad, that's... That's a lot of people, Josh said, his voice barely above a whisper. And did they say pirates? I thought the Galactic Patrol had pretty much wiped them out in this sector. James nodded grimly. Seems like some of them are still kicking around. Probably got desperate, went for a big score he paused, weighing the gravity of the situation. You know this could be dangerous, right? The Stargazer's tough, but she's not exactly built for combat. Josh squared his shoulders, his green eyes hardening with resolve. Since when has that ever stopped us? We can't just ignore a distress call, Dad. Not when there are thousands of lives at stake. A surge of pride welled up in James's chest. In that moment, he saw not just his son, but the man Josh had become. That's my boy, he said softly, before turning back to the controls. All right, let's see what this old girl can do. Prep for full burn we're going in. As James's hands flew over the console, plotting a course to intercept the celestial dream, he felt a familiar surge of adrenaline. It had been years since he'd seen real action, not since his days in the Galactic Patrol. But some instincts never faded. He just hoped they'd be enough to make a difference. The Stargazer's engines roared to life, the steady hum rising to a powerful crescendo as James pushed them to their limit. The stars outside the viewscreen began to blur as the old freighter accelerated to speeds she hadn't reached in years. Hang on, Celestial Dream James muttered under his breath, his eyes fixed on the rapidly approaching coordinates. The cavalry's coming. As they hurtled through space towards an uncertain confrontation, James couldn't help but reflect on the strange turns life could take. This morning, he'd been a simple freight hauler. Now, he and his son were all that stood between thousands of innocent lives and a gang of ruthless pirates. The stargazer dropped out of hyperspace with a shudder, the blur of stars resolving into pinpoints of light once more. Ahead of them loomed the massive silhouette of the celestial dream, a luxury passenger liner easily ten times the size of their modest freighter. Even from this distance, James could see the scorch marks marring its gleaming hull, evidence of the ongoing pirate attack. Holy shit, Josh breathed, his eyes wide as he took in the scene. A sleek, predatory-looking ship was latched onto the side of the passenger liner like a parasite. That's a Blackwing-class assault frigate. 
Those things are serious business, Dad. James nodded grimly, his hands tightening on the controls. Looks like these pirates came prepared. All right, son, this is where it gets tricky. I'm going to try to dock us on the far side of the Celestial Dream, away from that frigate. With any luck, we can slip in unnoticed. As they approached, the comm system crackled to life again. Unidentified vessel, this is the Celestial Dream. Please, if you're here to help, hurry. They've already breached our hull, and the transmission cut off abruptly in a burst of static. Hang on, James muttered, more to himself than to Josh. With a series of precise maneuvers, he guided the stargazer towards an emergency airlock on the passenger liner's port side. The docking procedure seemed to take an eternity, each second stretching out as James carefully aligned their ship. Finally, with a metallic clang that reverberated through the hull, they made contact, wherein James announced, already unbuckling his harness. Josh, I need you to stay here and keep the ship ready for a quick getaway, if things go south. No way, Josh interrupted, his jaw set in a stubborn line. I'm coming with you. You can't face those pirates alone. For a moment, James wanted to argue. But the determination in his son's eyes told him it would be futile. Besides, he had to admit, having backup wouldn't hurt. All right, he conceded. But you stay behind me, got it? And if I tell you to run, you run. No heroics. Josh nodded solemnly. Got it, Dad. James moved to a hidden compartment near the airlock, keying in a code he hadn't used in years. The panel slid open to reveal a pair of pulse rifles and several other pieces of equipment relics from his days in the Galactic Patrol. I always hoped I'd never need these again, James murmured, as he handed one of the rifles to Josh. Remember your training. These aren't toys. Though with weapons in hand and emergency medkits strapped to their backs, father and son approached the airlock. James took a deep breath, centering himself. It had been years since he'd been in combat, but as his hand closed around the rifle, muscle memory kicked in. It felt disturbingly familiar. Ready, he asked, glancing at Josh. His son nodded, face pale but determined. Ready. The airlock cycled open with a hiss of equalizing pressure. They stepped through into the dimly lit corridor of the Celestial Dream emergency lights casting an eerie red glow over everything. For a moment, all was quiet. Then, from around the corner ahead, came the sound of heavy footsteps and rough, alien voices. Check this section. If you find any more of those rich bastards, you know what to do. James held up a hand, signaling Josh to stay back. He edged forward, peering around the corner. Two hulking figures in mismatched armor were advancing down the corridor, weapons raised. Pirates. James took a deep breath, steadying himself. Then, in one fluid motion, he stepped out from cover, rifle raised. Drop your weapons, he barked, his voice ringing with authority. The pirate spun towards him, momentarily stunned by his sudden appearance. It was all the opening James needed. Two quick bursts from his rifle, and both pirates went down hard, their own weapons clattering uselessly to the floor. Clear James called back to Josh, who rounded the corner, eyes wide. Dad, that was. Wow. James allowed himself a grim smile. Like riding a bike. Come on, we need to move. There'll be more where they came from. As if on cue, an alarm began to blare throughout the ship. A gruff voice echoed over the intercom intruder alert in Section C. All hands, converge and eliminate. Well, James said dryly, checking his rifle's charge. Looks like our element of surprise is gone. You ready for this, son? Josh swallowed hard but nodded, gripping his own weapon tightly. Ready as I'll ever be. James clapped him on the shoulder. That's the spirit. Now let's go save some lives. With that, father and son moved deeper into the besieged ship, the echoes of approaching pirates growing louder with each step. The real fight was just beginning. The corridors of the Celestial Dream had become a maze of chaos and terror. Emergency lighting bathed everything in a hellish red glow, punctuated by the occasional spark from damaged systems. The blare of alarms mixed with distant screams and the ominous sound of weapons fire. 
James led the way, his movements precise and controlled, every sense on high alert. Josh followed close behind, trying to mirror his father's composure, but unable to completely hide his nervousness. As they rounded a corner, they came face to face with a group of terrified passengers, a mix of various alien species huddled together, eyes wide with fear. Please a tall, willowy being with iridescent skin pleaded, help us. James nodded grimly. We're here to get you out. Is anyone hurt? A chorus of relieved voices answered him, some injured but none critically. Josh James said, turning to his son, I need you to start getting these people to our ship. Take them back the way we came, in groups. Get them settled and come back for more. Josh's eyes widened. But Dad, what about you? I'm going deeper, James replied, his jaw set. There are bound to be more passengers trapped, and someone needs to deal with these pirates. For a moment, Josh looked like he wanted to argue, but then he nodded, understanding the necessity of the plan. Okay, but be careful, all right. James managed a small smile. Always am, son. Now go, quickly. As Josh began organizing the first group of evacuees, James turned his attention back to the depths of the ship. He could hear the sounds of conflict growing louder he was getting close to the main incursion. Moving swiftly but cautiously, James made his way through the winding corridors. He encountered more passengers along the way, directing them back towards Josh and safety. Some were injured, and James did what he could with his limited medical supplies, all the while aware that time was running short. Suddenly, a burst of weapons fire exploded just ahead. James ducked into a recessed doorway, peering out carefully. A group of passengers was pinned down at the end of the corridor, taking cover behind overturned furniture as two pirates advanced on them, firing indiscriminately. James took a deep breath, steadying himself. Then, in one fluid motion, he stepped out from cover and opened fire. His first shot caught the nearest pirate square in the back, dropping him instantly. The second pirate whirled, bringing his weapon to bear, but James was faster. Two more shots, and the threat was neutralized. It's clear James called out to the cowering passengers. I'm here to help. Can you move? Slowly, the group emerged from their makeshift barricade. There were about a dozen of them, mostly unharmed save for a few minor injuries. Thank the stars one of them, a squat, reptilian being, breathed. We thought we were done for. Not today, James assured them. There's an evacuation underway. Head back down this corridor and you'll find my son. He'll get you to safety. As the grateful passengers hurried away, James pressed on. The ship's layout was confusing, clearly designed more for luxury than practicality, but he managed to orient himself towards what he assumed was the center of the pirate incursion. He was proven right as he entered a large, opulent atrium. The space was a battleground, with passengers and crew taking cover behind upturned tables and decorative pillars. On the far side, a group of pirates had set up a makeshift command post, coordinating their attack. James's mind raced, assessing the situation. He was outnumbered and outgunned, but he had the element of surprise. If he could create enough chaos, it might give the passengers a chance to escape. Taking careful aim, James targeted what looked like a power conduit near the pirate's position. His shot struck true, resulting in a spectacular shower of sparks and a localized power failure. In the ensuing confusion, James shouted to the trapped passengers and crew, Now, run. Head for the port side emergency airlocks. As people began to move, James provided covering fire, picking off pirates who tried to stop the escape but he knew he couldn't hold them off forever. Already, he could see the pirates regrouping, trying to flank his position. Just then, his comm unit crackled to life. Dad Josh's voice came through, tight with worry. Where are you? I've got a lot of people here saying you saved them, but... I'm in the main atrium, James cut him off, ducking as a volley of enemy fire whizzed overhead. There are a lot of passengers here, heading your way. Be ready for them. Dad, it sounds like you're in trouble. I'm coming to help. Negative James barked, popping up to loose another salvo at the advancing pirates. 
You stay put and coordinate the evacuation. That's an order, son. There was a moment of tense silence over the comm. Then reluctantly, understood. But Dad, please be careful. Will do, son James replied, allowing himself a small smile despite the dire situation. Your old man still got a few tricks up his sleeve. As he signed off, James took stock of his surroundings. The passengers had mostly cleared out now, but the pirates were closing in. He needed to move to draw their attention away from the escaping civilians. With a deep breath, James broke from his cover and sprinted for a service door on the far side of the atrium. Shouts and weapons fire followed him, but he made it through, finding himself in a narrow maintenance corridor. As he ran, following the twisting path deeper into the ship, James couldn't help but feel a grim sense of satisfaction. The pirates had thought they'd found easy prey in the celestial dream. Instead, they'd run headlong into humanity's stubborn refusal to abandon those in need. And James Sterling wasn't done teaching them that lesson yet. James's breath came in ragged gasps as he pelted down the maintenance corridor, the sounds of pursuit echoing behind him. His years of experience told him he was heading towards the ship's core likely where the pirate leadership had set up their command center. Suddenly, the ship-wide comm system crackled to life. A gravelly voice, dripping with malice, filled the air. Attention, passengers and crew of the Celestial Dream. This is Captain Vex of the Black Nebula Raiders. It seems some of you have gotten it into your heads to resist us. How quaint. James slowed his pace listening intently as he caught his breath. Let me make this abundantly clear, Vex continued. Your pathetic attempts at heroism end now, or we end this ship. We've rigged your engine core to overload. In precisely 30 minutes, this floating palace becomes a spectacular fireball. Unless, of course, you all decide to behave and hand over every credit and valuable item you possess. The captain's laughter echoed through the corridors. Oh, and to our mysterious would-be hero, I've got a special invitation for you. Why don't you join us on the bridge? I do so love meeting new playmates. As the transmission cut off, James's mind raced. Thirty minutes wasn't much time, but it might be enough if he played this right. His comm unit buzzed. Dad Josh's voice was tight with worry. Did you hear that? What do we do? James took a deep breath, steeling himself for what he knew had to come next. Josh, listen to me very carefully. I need you to take off with everyone you've evacuated so far. Get to a safe distance. What? No. Dad, I'm not leaving you here. This isn't a debate, son James said, his voice firm but gentle. Those people need you to get them to safety. I'm going to stop these bastards and save everyone else. There was a moment of agonizing silence. Then Josh's voice came back, thick with emotion. Dad, please, don't do this. James felt his heart constrict. I have to, son. It's who we are. It's who I raised you to be. Humans don't run from danger, we run towards it, especially when lives are at stake. He could hear Josh's shaky breath on the other end. I, I understand. But Dad, you better make it out of this. That's in order, you hear me. Despite everything, James chuckled. Yes, sir, I'll do my best. Now go, get those people to safety. I'm proud of you, Josh, so proud. With a final goodbye, James cut the communication. He allowed himself one moment, just one to feel the weight of what he was doing. Then, squaring his shoulders, he set off towards the bridge. The corridors became increasingly chaotic as James made his way forward. He encountered pockets of resistance crew members and even some passengers fighting back against the pirates. James lent his aid where he could, his expert marksmanship and tactical advice turning the tide in several skirmishes. As he neared the bridge, the opposition grew fiercer. James found himself in an all-out firefight in a wide corridor leading to the command center. Taking cover behind a sturdy bulkhead, he exchanged fire with a group of pirates guarding the entrance. Come on out, hero one of the pirates taunted. Captain Vex is waiting to meet you. Well, James called back. I'd hate to keep him waiting. With that, he blind-fired around the corner, forcing the pirates to duck. In that split second, James rolled out from cover, 
coming up on one knee with perfect form. His shots found their marks with deadly precision, and in moments the way to the bridge was clear. James approached the sealed bridge doors, keenly aware that he was walking into a trap, but he was out of options and out of time. The fate of everyone left on the celestial dream rested on what happened next. Taking a deep breath, James hit the door control. As the massive doors slid open, he stepped onto the bridge, weapon at the ready. The scene that greeted him was one of controlled chaos. Pirate crew manned the stations, while terrified bridge officers were held at gunpoint. And there, in the captain's chair, lounged a figure that could only be Captain Vex. The pirate leader was an imposing sight of Cronaxian, if James had to guess. Nearly seven feet tall, with mottled gray skin and four arms, each ending in wickedly sharp claws. Vex's yellow eyes fixed on James with predatory interest. Ah, our hero arrives, Vex's voice was the same one from the announcement, a sound like gravel in a blender. I must say, I'm impressed. You've caused quite a bit of trouble for my crew. James kept his weapon trained on Vex, eyes darting around the bridge, taking in every detail. Let these people go, Vex. Your plan's already falling apart. Half the ship's been evacuated. Vex's mandibles clicked in what might have been amusement. Oh, I'm well aware. But you see, that's the beauty of having a bomb in the engine room. Win or lose, I don't walk away empty-handed. If I can't have the Celestial Dream's riches, well, at least I'll have a spectacular explosion to remember it by. As if to punctuate his point, a holographic display sprang to life in the center of the bridge. A countdown timer ticked away mercilessly 15, 1459, 1458. James felt his blood run cold. Fifteen minutes. Fifteen minutes to disarm a bomb, save a ship full of hostages, and somehow get out alive. It was going to be one hell of a challenge. But then again, James Sterling had never been one to back down from a challenge. Well then, Vex James said, a grim smile playing on his lips, I guess we better get started. The bridge of the Celestial Dream had become a powder keg of tension. James stood at its center, his weapon trained on Captain Vex, while around them pirate crew and hostage officers watched in tense silence. The countdown timer continued its merciless March 1430, 1429, 1428. So human Vex drawled, seemingly unconcerned by the gun pointed at him. What's your grand plan? You can't possibly think you can save everyone. James's mind raced, assessing options, calculating risks. Maybe not everyone he admitted, but I'm sure as hell going to try. In one fluid motion, James shifted his aim and fired. Not at Vex, but at the main control console. Sparks flew as the shot connected, and suddenly the bridge was plunged into darkness. Emergency lighting kicked in a moment later, bathing everything in a dim red glow. Chaos erupted. James used the confusion to his advantage diving behind a nearby console as Vex roared orders to his crew. The ship's officers, seizing the opportunity, began to fight back against their captors. All hands James shouted over the din, get to the escape pods, move. As the melee on the bridge continued, James keyed his comm unit. This is James Sterling to any crew or security personnel. We have less than 15 minutes before the ship's engines overload. Begin immediate evacuation of all remaining passengers and crew. Acknowledgements crackled over the comm from various parts of the ship. James allowed himself a moment of grim satisfaction before focusing on his next move. Ducking and weaving through the firefight on the bridge, James made his way to a secondary engineering station. If he could just access the ship's systems. A massive clawed hand clamped down on his shoulder, spinning him around. James found himself face to face with the enraged visage of Captain Vex. You meddlesome little worm, the pirate captain snarled. Two of his arms pinned James against the console while the other two raised wicked-looking blades. James reacted on pure instinct. He head-butted Vex with all his might, catching the Cronaxian off guard. As Vex's grip loosened, James broke free and delivered a series of quick, Precise strikes to vulnerable points on the pirate's body, a technique he'd learned long ago for dealing with larger, multi-limbed opponents. Vex staggered back, momentarily stunned. 
James used the opportunity to access the engineering station, his fingers flying over the controls. Come on, come on, he muttered, digging deep into half-remembered schematics of luxury liners. If he could just route auxiliary power to the right systems. A ping from the console confirmed his success. Attention all hands, James announced over the ship-wide comm. Emergency force fields have been activated in all damaged sections. Evacuation routes to escape pods are now clear. You have 10 minutes to abandon ship. Move. The countdown on the central display now read 945 and falling. James knew what he had to do next. Dodging a wild swing from a recovering Vex, James sprinted for the bridge exit. Sorry, Captain, he called over his shoulder, but I've got a date with your bomb. James raced through the corridors of the Celestial Dream, now mostly empty save for the occasional group of stragglers he urged towards the nearest escape pods. His breath came in ragged gasps, muscles burning with exertion, but he pushed on. He skidded around a corner and nearly ran headlong into a group of pirates trying to force their way into a sealed room. Hey, one of them shouted, raising his weapon. James didn't hesitate. He fired from the hip, downing two pirates before diving into a roll that brought him behind a structural support. A brief, intense firefight ensued, but James's experience and desperation proved the deciding factors. As the last pirate fell, James approached the sealed door. A quick check of the security panel confirmed his suspicions this was the auxiliary engine control room. This is James Sterling, he called out. I'm here to help. Open up. After a tense moment, the door slid open, revealing a small group of engineering crew huddled around a complex array of equipment. In the center of it all sat a crude but undoubtedly powerful explosive device, its own timer counting down in sync with the ship's countdown. Oh, thank the stars, one of the engineers, a wiry Venloxian, exclaimed. We've been trying to disarm it, but it's beyond our expertise. James approached the bomb, his heart sinking as he took in its complexity. This was well beyond his abilities, too. But maybe. Okay, new plan, he announced. We can't disarm it, but we might be able to contain the blast he turned to the lead engineer. I need you to initiate an emergency core ejection. If we can get this thing outside the ship before it blows, we might just save the celestial dream. The engineer's eyes widened. But sir, that's incredibly risky. The timing would have to be perfect, and even then. It's our only shot James cut him off. Now, how fast can you make it happen? As the engineering team sprang into action, James checked the countdown 3.30 remaining. It was going to be close. Dangerously close. James's comm unit suddenly crackled to life. Dad. Dad, come in Josh's voice was frantic. I'm here, son, James replied, his voice tight as he helped the engineers prep the ejection sequence. What's going on? We're at a safe distance, but the ship. You're still on board, aren't you? James closed his eyes for a moment, allowing himself to feel the full weight of the situation. Yeah, I am. But don't worry, I've got a plan. Dad. Josh's voice cracked with emotion. Listen to me, Josh James said, his tone gentle but firm. Whatever happens, I want you to know how proud I am of you. You did good today, son. Real good. Dad, please. I love you, Josh. Now I've got to go. There are still people here counting on me. With that, James cut the communication. He took a deep breath, stealing himself for what was to come. All right, people he called out to the engineering team. Let's save this ship. The auxiliary engine control room of the Celestial Dream had become a hive of frantic activity. James Sterling stood at the center of it all, barking orders and lending a hand wherever he could as the engineering team raced to implement their desperate plan. Ejection sequence is ready. Sir, the lead engineer called out, her fingers flying over a complex array of controls. James glanced at the countdown timer 145 remaining. His jaw tightened. Do it. A deep rumble reverberated through the ship as massive systems engaged. James could feel the deck plates vibrating beneath his feet 
as the auxiliary engine core with the bomb still attached began to separate from the rest of the ship. Ejection in progress, a computerized voice announced. Warning significant risk of structural damage. All personnel evacuate immediately. You heard the Lady James shouted to the engineering team. Get to the escape pods now. As the team rushed out, James turned back to the main console. Someone needed to stay behind to ensure the ejection completed successfully. He knew the risks, but there was no other choice. The ship groaned and shuddered as the core continued to separate. Warning klaxons blared, adding to the cacophony. Through it all, James kept his eyes fixed on the readouts, making minute adjustments to ensure a clean ejection. Suddenly, a violent tremor rocked the ship. James was thrown off his feet, slamming hard into a bulkhead. Pain exploded in his side, definitely a broken rib, maybe two. Gritting his teeth, James pulled himself back to the console. The ejection was almost complete, but a new alert caught his eye. The bomb's timer had accelerated in response to the ejection process. Oh, you've got to be kidding me, James muttered. He had seconds, not minutes, to finish this. With a final, Herculean effort, James input the last sequence of commands. The ship gave one last tremendous shudder, and then... Silence. For a moment, James held his breath, waiting. Then, through the viewport, he saw at the auxiliary engine core, with the bomb still attached, drifting away from the ship. He'd done it. The celestial dream was saved. James allowed himself a moment of relief before the reality of his situation set in. He was still on a heavily damaged ship, alone, with no easy way out. And he was injured, the pain in his side growing more intense by the second. As if to underscore the direness of his predicament, another computerized announcement echoed through the ship warning critical damage to multiple systems. Hull breach imminent in sections 15 through 22. All personnel must evacuate immediately. James grimaced. No rest for the weary, I guess. Clutching his side, he made his way out of the control room and into the corridor beyond. The ship's interior was a mess flickering lights, sparking conduits, and the occasional gout of steam from ruptured pipes. It was a miracle the celestial dream was still holding together. James stumbled through the chaos, trying to remember the layout of the ship. There had to be an escape pod nearby, or at least a shuttle bay. He just had to keep moving. As he rounded a corner, he came face to face with a sight that made his blood run cold Captain Vex, looking battered but very much alive, flanked by two equally rough-looking pirates. You Vex snarled, his yellow eyes narrowing with hatred. I should have known you'd be behind this. James raised his hands slowly, acutely aware of the weapons trained on him. It's over, Vex. Your bomb's gone, your crew scattered. Why don't we call it a day and get off this ship before it falls apart around us? Vex's mandibles clicked in what might have been amusement. Oh, I intend to leave, human. But not before I've had my revenge. Time seemed to slow as Vex raised his weapon. James tensed, ready to dive for cover, knowing he was probably too slow, too injured to make it. Suddenly, the ship lurched violently. A massive tremor far larger than any before, rocked the celestial dream. Vex and his pirates were thrown off balance, their shots going wide. James didn't hesitate. Ignoring the searing pain in his side, he charged forward, tackling Vex to the ground. They grappled furiously, a tangle of limbs and claws. James fought with everything he had left, driven by sheer determination and the knowledge that he had to get back to his son. With a final, desperate surge of strength, James managed to pin Vex down. He delivered a series of quick, brutal strikes to the pirate captain's head, until finally, mercifully, Vex went limp. Panting heavily, James looked up to see that the other two pirates had been knocked unconscious by falling debris during the tremor. It seemed luck was finally on his side. But his victory was short-lived. Another announcement rang out, its computerized calm a stark contrast to the dire warning it delivered critical hull breach detected. Ship-wide decompression imminent. All personnel must evacuate immediately. James staggered to his feet, his entire body screaming in protest. He had to move, had to find a way off this doomed ship. But as he took a step forward, 
His vision swam, the edges darkening. He'd pushed himself too far, too hard. As he felt himself start to fall, James had one last, desperate thought, I'm sorry, Josh. I tried. Then darkness claimed him, the chaos of the dying ship fading away to nothing. Consciousness returned to James Sterling in fragments. First came sound a steady beeping, the hum of machinery. Then sensation the softness of a bed beneath him, the sterile smell of a medical bay. Finally, he managed to pry his eyes open, squinting against the bright lights above. Dad. James turned his head towards the voice, his vision slowly focusing on a familiar face. Josh, he croaked, his throat dry and raw. Oh. Thank God, Josh breathed, relief flooding his features. He leaned forward, grasping his father's hand. I thought, we thought we'd lost you. James tried to sit up, wincing as pain flared in his side. The ship. What happened? Josh gently pushed him back down. Easy, Dad. You've been out for three days. The doctor said you need to rest. Three days, James repeated, bewildered. But how? How did I get off the celestial dream? A new voice joined the conversation. That would be thanks to your son here, Mr. Sterling. James looked past Josh to see a tall, elegant alien entering the room. Her iridescent skin marked her as one of the passengers he'd rescued earlier. Allow me to introduce myself, she said, her voice melodic. I am Ambassador Lysithia of the Galactic Council, and you, James Sterling, are a hero. James blinked, trying to process this information. I don't understand. The last thing I remember is the ship breaking apart. Josh squeezed his hand. After you cut off communication with me, I knew I couldn't just leave you there. I took the stargazer back. Against your orders, he gave a sheepish grin. Guess stubbornness runs in the family. We found you unconscious, with three incapacitated pirates nearby, the ambassador continued. Your son's timing was impeccable. We managed to get you to safety just before that section of the ship decompressed. James looked at his son with a mixture of pride and exasperation. You could have been killed, Josh. So could you, Josh retorted. But that didn't stop you from running headfirst into danger to save all those people. Ambassador Lysithia nodded solemnly. Indeed, your actions saved over 5,000 lives, Mr. Sterling. The Galactic Council owes you a great debt. James shook his head, still struggling to take it all in. I just did what anyone would do. No, Dad, Josh said softly. You did what you taught me to do, what humans do. We run towards danger when others need help. A commotion outside the room drew their attention. Through the doorway, James could see a crowd gathering in the corridor aliens of various species, all trying to get a glimpse inside. Word of your recovery has spread quickly, the ambassador explained with a smile. These are but a few of the passengers and crew you saved. They've been waiting for days to thank you personally. As if on cue, a cheer erupted from the crowd. Calls of thank you and our hero in various languages filled the air. James felt a lump form in his throat, overwhelmed by the outpouring of gratitude. He turned to Josh seeing tears in his son's eyes that mirrored his own. Well, James said, his voice thick with emotion, I guess we made quite an impression, didn't we? Josh laughed, wiping at his eyes. Yeah, Dad, I'd say we did. Ambassador Lysithia stepped closer to the bed. Mr. Sterling, once you've recovered, the Galactic Council would like to formally recognize your bravery. There's talk of a Medal of Valor, perhaps even a diplomatic position if you're interested. James raised an eyebrow. A diplomat. Me. Who better to represent humanity's finest qualities, the ambassador replied. Your actions have shown the galaxy the true strength of the human spirit. James leaned back, considering the offer. After a moment, he shook his head with a wry smile. I appreciate the offer, ambassador, but I think I'll leave the diplomacy to the professionals. Josh and I were just simple freight haulers. Very well, Lysithia conceded with a nod. But know that you and your son will always be welcome throughout Galactic Council space. Your deeds will not be forgotten. 
As the ambassador moved to address the crowd outside, James turned back to Josh. So son, what do you say? Ready to get back to our boring life of hauling freight. Josh grinned. After all this excitement? Honestly, a nice boring cargo run sounds pretty good right about now. James laughed, then winced as his ribs protested. Couldn't agree more. Although he added with a mischievous glint in his eye, maybe we could install some better weapons on the Stargazer. Just in case. Dad Josh exclaimed in mock horror, before breaking into laughter. As father and son shared the moment, the cheers from outside washed over them. James Sterling closed his eyes, feeling a profound sense of pride not just in himself or his son, but in humanity as a whole. They were a species that ran towards danger, that stood up in the face of impossible odds. And today the galaxy had seen firsthand what that truly meant. It was a good day to be human. Thank you so much for listening to this story. I hope you loved it. Please remember to subscribe if you did like it so you can see more videos like this. And please give us a like and a comment too. I'll see you in the next one.